Hello crafting friends, welcome to this week's vlog. Been half busy. I have frogged a jumper that I started twice and I'm now on the third um, and final. Go at it. I won't mention it yet until I actually have something to talk about it, but welcome. Welcome to everyone. Welcome to my lounge room where I craft. It's a rainy day here in Sydney, Australia. I live near the coast and I've taken some video of the beach when I went down there at lunchtime today. It's the 3rd of May 2024. And yeah, we're into autumn and autumn is a lovely, lovely part of um, the year. I love it. I love autumn and spring. It's me. Yeah, I went out for a well, I had to go out this morning, see my friend, and get some fresh air. <laughs> I've been inside for a few days. But yeah, it's lovely outside. But when I got home, it was pouring rain. It was pouring rain at the beach. I couldn't get out of the car and take a video. So you'll probably see windscreen wipers in some of it. And yeah, that's just it. So I'll show you what I've been doing. It's Friday the 3rd of May and I'm wearing a dress. Can you believe it? I haven't worn a dress for a fair while. And that's mainly because it involved putting my arms up and putting the dress on and you know and actually taking it off I think that was the hardest part um, because I needed help <laughs> but then I found this hack on uh, YouTube of how to put a zip into a ready-made dress so all my friend dresses 12 that I've made to wear for myself I've put zips in and now I can wear them. I'm so happy. And I think they look okay. Especially um, when worn with a um, thin cardigan or something. So yeah, I am really happy. And I think, <laughs> I think we should all do this. You know, it's very easy to modify something that's already made. So I desperately wanted to wear my beautiful dresses that I've made over the last, I'd say, eight years. I found the Fen pattern, F-E-N, dress pattern, and I made 10 or 12 of them, actually. And 10 I wear, I love, now. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll get those out later and show you, but um, today I'm wearing my, they're mainly linen, because I love linen, and this is... Uh, khaki type color I'd say one of my favorite colors and my lime green cardigan so yeah I'm going to see my friend Judith and uh, yeah it's raining so I'll take some rain video <laughs> and catch up when I get back so I'm walking along my street going towards Bondi Road and luckily it's not raining at the moment but you know how it is after it's rained and the trees still have rain in the leaves and every time you go under a tree you get wet. What's <laughs> happening? I hope, it's, hope, I hope it doesn't rain till I get there. It's only a short walk. Should be okay. I like it after it's rained. It's really nice. Everything's nice and green. Hedges love it. Trees love it. And we're heading into autumn. And yeah. This bush, tree, is a sure sign of rain coming. It's a mariah, sort of smells like jasmine. But when the flowers come out in profusion like this, 
means rain. That's so beautiful. Let's have a look at the dress. Well, the dresses that I've, um, that are my favorites that I've put a zip in. And I'll leave the link in the description box below on how to put a zip in a ready-made dress. So looking at my wardrobe, these are the dresses that I've made. I love them. That's all the dresses I have, and I have a cos dress, which I love and I have not worn. It's a knitted top and a beautiful frilly bottom, but these are my fen dresses. And I just love them. I'll take them out and show you and show you what I've put in the back to make them easier to use. I'll show you what to time. These are the most favourite ones anyway. This one is a beautiful fabric. And it's made... It's made exactly to the pattern. I made size 18. Which is now a little loose on me, but it doesn't matter. I still have to do a hack to this one. I'm going to take the sleeves back to here. Um, because it sort of bunches, I would think, under a thin-ish cardigan. But that is that one. It has pockets on both sides. And it's mid-calf. I'll show the zipper. So when these dresses were made and were hard to get on, I hadn't used them for a while, I was desperate, you know, to put a zipper in. And then John found this hack on YouTube on how to put a zipper in a ready-made dress and I think it looks okay that's the end of it it has a black stripe down the center but you don't see that because it's covered by a cardigan and the overall look is really nice so that is my first one the second one I put a catch in the top after it was made and redid the facing on the back but I really love the fabric in this and it is a short shift type dress so just I left out the uh, bodice uh, connecting connecting to the skirt and just continued on and so it is more a tunic um, length I really like it I love this fabric did I say it was from Spoonflower and the detail on the screen printing is just beautiful. Really like that one. I'll show you the back. So the back just has a press tab, a snap button, and it just opens to here, just long enough for me to get my um, shoulders in and out without stretching too much. That's the back. It's really lovely. Spoonflower has a nice lot of fabrics that you can just type in whatever you would like. Moths, butterflies, flowers, anything you can think of. Boats and you'll get it. I love this linen dress and I was so sad that I couldn't wear it. It's made to pattern too. It's lovely linen, three quarter sleeve, uh, three quarter length. The fabric is beautiful print. I think it's called painted painted linen. I'm also going to adjust the sleeves, I think, make them more cropped. I'll show you the back. So I'll put a white zipper in this. I couldn't have a black one. 
So I put a white zipper in. It's so easy to put it in over the top, I would not think, although I have dyslexia and so John had to help me um, line up the zip so that it was facing the wrong way and then the right way. But yeah, after that, all right, all fixed. See if I can open it one moment. So here's what the zip looks like on the inside. It's a great opening and great to get into now. And very wearable. This is my blue linen dress, which is exactly the same as the one that I'm wearing today. My khaki one. This is a blue one. For the pockets, I ran out of fabric so I've put joins in the fabric for the pockets but you won't see them and then I put a very fetching piece of um, bias binding uh, to cover the edge I love the green tartan look <laughs> but yeah it's basically exactly the same as my khaki Put a blue zip in this one and I sewed the edge of the fabric over the zipper so it's a bit different you can see I hand sewed it first but when I'm wearing it you don't see that because it's covered by a jumper it's very usable now and I also like these sleeves how they're more narrow than the other dress and this is what I'll do to them because I think it's very handy when you're wearing a cardigan over the top. Second last one I've got to show. I have done the shoulders and I really like the shoulders. I love this fabric. It's painted linen. It's just a beautiful um, design. And for the pockets... Yes, I ran out of fabric, so I lined them with um, white. Doesn't matter, you won't see it. Very usable now and beautiful. I'll show you the back. This is after I put the zipper in. I've also um, covered the zip with the fabric on this one. It doesn't really um, make much difference to me whether the zip is um invisible or visible because it's they're both very neat very neat hack and yeah i think it looks okay and very neat now to my last one you have other fen dresses but these are my f my really my favorites that i've done up to date this is um the fabric is Brandon Mobley, part of the K Facet Collective. Uh, I think the fa uh, the pattern is called Octopus. I bought the fabric for another dress, but I decided to make a fen dress because <laughs> the pattern is reliable and turns out for me. I've yet to finish the shoulders, or oh, well, change the shoulders, I would say. I mean, I've done them really neatly, but um, I want to change it. So I'll show you the back. I've made the zip visible um, in this one. I don't mind. It's just a black stripe sort of melts into the design of the fabric. It's uh, invisible when I've got a jumper on. But pretty neat. It's a mid 11 fan. And I love this uh, design. I think it's really nice. So all these pat all these dresses that I've shown today is the Fen pattern. That's capital e F, capital e, capital E, capital N pattern. I got it from the UK. It came really quickly and it is a beautiful basic dress pattern that is easy to make and looks great. And I think I recommend it to anyone who has a similar shape to me. I'm a cello and I think it's flattering. I have had some compliments on my dresses and 
I think it's just a great pattern. So if you're looking for a good pattern, I recommend this one. This is a particularly beautiful gift that I received from my friend Judith recently. So it's a new quilt. It's beautiful. It's called Towns and the colours are just lovely in it. Have a look. As a maker of quilts, which I think of as art, I sometimes swap with my friends or I barter with friends. Or you know how it is when you just gift a special thing to your friends or somebody that you don't know, really. I mean, I do that too. But Judith made this for me. And isn't it beautiful? It's a... I would say it's a, I have it over the back of the couch, but um, it's probably a lap rug, lap quilt, and it's just beautiful, and I just love it, and I love the fabric she's used. They're all transport. They all have lovely words on them. And really, as it personifies Judith too. She is always ready to help anyone. She's just a lovely person and she made me this quilt and it's got beautiful town fabric on it. I think she called it Towns. I think she did. I think that's what she said. She gave it to me last week and it's just lovely and just makes me so happy. It's got beautiful binding on it. It's got a beautiful back. Yeah, it's called Towns and it's got beautiful quilting. It's just lovely. I think she is so talented. She's a fibre artist. Yeah, beautiful quilt. So lucky. Thank you, Judith. Last week, John and Geordie and Audie and Kay went to the shed which is in the mountains, and they went to an iron fest, which is very interesting. It's sort of medieval, sort of steampunk vibe. <laughs> and they took some video for me, and it is lovely in the country. It's in the Blue Mountains, just over the Blue Mountains, so it's in the Tablelands, really what we call the Tablelands in New South Wales. And the countryside is just beautiful, and it is very reminiscent of Wales. I would think in the UK that's why it's named New South Wales probably but um, the countryside is just beautiful and there's some interesting things to look at at Iron Fest
Now we'll have a look at my ongoing whip, cats and dogs. I have done some work to it, oh sorry, I've connected the strips. I still have to make some strips I think to make it the right length, no rush, but you know me. Some things just need to be done. So I finish this one. So this is the length that I'm going for. It's uh, it's my wingspan, so I'd say I'm going for 60 inches in this one. So that's the first one that I've finished. You can see I still have a few pieces, but I'm going to have to look in my um, fabrics, in my black and white fabrics, cats, to find more, I think, to make some more, more pieces. next one so I'm really happy to have strips done I love this one oh they're in reverse because I've got my camera around the other way today It does matter if it's up and down. It's a lovely one. Another finished strip. I 
really love trains, especially steam trains. Look at this. It's lovely. So that is all the um, strips that I have finished. Very happy about it. And then the next, I'd say, probably won't have a look at it next week, but you never know. I am hoping to start a new quilt foundation paper piecing and it's cats just cats i have previously made a cat a pat a, a quilt using this uh, pattern and it is lovely but i'll show you more about that next week and it's foundation paper piecing so it is uh, an interesting technique and you have perfect corners perfect lines when you do foundation paper piecing and for years years I was wondering how they did Mariner's Corner, uh, Mariner's Compass, because I thought they were so amazing, especially the quilters and some of the traditional quilters in the U in uh, the US had done these amazing Mariner's Compasses, big quilts, and then I found out, and I felt sort of cheated, but not that they had done foundation paper piecing without telling me. <laughs> it was such a shock. And, uh, yeah, and then I discovered foundation paper piecing by accident. And I thought, all this time, I didn't know <laughs> that this existed. And no one said. They just showed their quilts and you thought, oh, that is amazing. How did they do that? And they didn't say. But I have found foundation paper piecing. And we will do. Maybe you'll buy the pattern too. It's a beautiful pattern of cats. And you do it foundation paper piecing. I used all K facet fabrics last time. But this time I will use a different theme from my cats. We'll just wait and see what happens. And I have to have a look through the stash, so we'll go through that together too. Choosing fabrics is always exciting for a new project. And I hope you'll like having a look at what we choose and maybe it will be helpful too. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this episode. It's sewing morning here, sitting near the window. It's nice and sunny outside, but a few hours ago it was pouring rain. It's pouring, still cloudy up there, but you know. So I am sitting here in my favorite spot and doing some English paper piecing. I love English paper piecing. I've just re-thread my needle I was playing thread chicken <laughs> and you know what happened. I was like an inch away and yeah. So I had to re-thread my needle but I'm connecting my um, strips so that's a lot of fun. I love connecting the strips together and then I've decided not to put um, hexagons uh, between the rows I'm just going to connect them so that the hydrangea triangles make stars and that will look really nice I'm just hoping I haven't got too many polka dots <laughs> because I really do love the polka dot fabric and it's a true black that they're on and they really pop but they've popped quite a lot <laughs> so this will be a nice friendly little quilt and yeah this is all I, all you need for English paper piecing, really. When you've got your papers connected to your fabric, you just need a couple of pins, a little uh, plastic peg, some nice um, sewing thread. I use Guterman's uh, quilting uh, thread. <laughs> and I like it because it doesn't knot. And it's just as fine as unquilted thread <laughs> and I love my scissors my friend Judith got me these scissors they are lefty scissors just for me but yeah this is a 
This is a good morning for um, doing this type of work. And yeah, there's clouds out there and it's got a bit cloudy, but we don't mind because we're all nice and cosy and it is heading towards winter. It's the 1st of May, May Day here. And yeah, it was raining all night. And uh, luckily we went out before it rained. There was like a gap of two hours last night when it didn't rain and we went out. We went out to celebrate Mamuna, which is celebrating the end of Pesach uh, Passover. And we get to eat all the beautiful pastries and, oh, nougat, not nougat, um, you know, all the desserts from the Middle East, from... You uh, mainly from the Andalusian part of Spain and south. <laughs> yeah, we and beautiful music and everything, and it was just great, you know, to have two hours without rain. But it was nice. So yeah, people were dressed up. The music was nice. I really love drum music. And the people were drumming away. It was great. Yeah. Matipan. Matipan is what I was trying to think of. When we are in Toledo in Spain, we had this, I think Toledo must be the capital of Matipan because there were whole shops just of Matipan and all these wonderful creations in the windows and things made out of Matipan. It was like they used it like clay. It was just amazing. And every day we were there, John bought me a little box of marzipan fruit like my, my grandmother used to make. And they look just like real fruit but miniature and they are marzipan and coloured. Do you know do you know what I mean? Just amazing. And I just had like six in the morning, every morning. It was just little apples and little oranges and uh, little limes. They were just Fabulous. I just love marzipan. And I really love it in icing too. You know how you get marzipan in um, royal icing underneath? Well, I really love that too. So, yeah. <laughs> that was my time. I could get. Oh, it's okay. That's me signing off for this week, friends. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for coming in to craft with me. Have a look at what I've been doing. I do like having a weekly chat and catching up. If you have any thoughts on what I do, please leave a comment. Crafting is such fun, especially quilting and um, knitting for me. So that's the main things that I do, really. And uh, it takes up a nice lot of time for me. It's also handy to do when watching TV or YouTube. I've now found um, movies on YouTube. I really like the old Sherlock Holmes movies. They're so fun to watch, especially the ones made in the 1940s. And sometimes they've coloured them, so <laughs> they are fun to watch. So, yeah. Thanks for coming by. See you next week. Bye, friends. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me. It's fun to watch. Numbers grow. See who comes to visit. Thanks, friends. Bye.
weekend I'm home alone and I thought I'd go through my yarns, my stash, my collection of wool and it's mainly wool, but some have um, silk and yak mix. I thought I would go through them and see and put them into projects. Now this is why I buy wool, I buy it for projects. <coughs> some I get done, some I don't. Some frogged, some not. <laughs> you know how it is. So this is the first one. And I do love cones. So John wound that off a British wool cone for me. And that's a base. And then some other yarn to go with it. And I want to make a jumper with it. So that's a jumper. Uh amount hopefully this is my couch where I do all my thinking <clears throat> my bag of beautiful Eurodales I want to use them probably won't use them all but I want to use some of them and I want to make a shawl with that here's two balls two uh, cakes that John has wound up for me that I want to use for a shawl. I must say I haven't um, organised this into a project, but it's just beautiful, especially the painted yarns. So I've got, um, I think, five skeins in there. This is a, jump, a cardigan that I'm halfway through. Well, I've done the back. That's it. It's a number eight. The first number eight I frogged because it was too small. But this one I'm doing on five millimeter needles and using a wool cone, which is fingering weight, and I'm putting it with Holscan Luca with that beautiful pink. So that is a whole cardigan there. This is a bag of the frogged cardigan and two lots of Luca that I've just bought which I really like I like Luca now well I just found Luca <laughs> and here are the other projects that I've got and this is all the yarn I've got so not yarn there <laughs> kitty John has been combing kitty I've, this is a sidetrack John has been, um, he, Kitty loves to be brushed, especially when, um, I don't know, when she feels like it. And there's a special brush, cat brush that we've got. And he brushes her and some of her undercoat comes out and it's all fluffy. And we've been collecting it now for a couple of years and putting it in a <laughs> Ziploc bag. And I'm going to knit Kitty one day a hat from her fur. A beret, maybe. Hey, kitty, do you want a beret from your fur? I think your hair is pretty keeping you warm. Um, that is another project that I want to make, and that's all I need for it. It is a... That's what it is. It's a project. Then in here is a vest. So that's all the... All the yarn I need for a vest. Here are four balls of Kate Blue John Arben. I love John Arben, and that is enough to make me a shawl. Here is another shawl that I really want to make, and it is what's it called? I think it's Cloud. Anyway, it's um. I'll open it up.